Okay, let's explore this net present value example, and I'll illustrate how to solve this using Excel, and then I'll also illustrate how you could solve this using present value table factors. Okay, so the problem you can see here, Metro Shuttle is considering investing in two new vans that are expected to generate combined cash inflows of $20,000 per year. Now, the van's combined purchase price is $70,400, the expected life and salvage value of each of the four years, and $13,200 respectively. Oh, of each are four years, and $13,200 respectively. It would help if I read it correctly. Okay, Metro Shuttle has an average cost of capital of 12%, and then they give you Table 1 and Table 2 if you're going to solve it using the present value factors. All right, first, I'll solve it using Excel, and this is Excel. You can see that here. And what I've done is I've said, here's the time periods, here's the expenditure amount, here's the savings amount, so here's the total. So I'm just going to sum over from columns C and D. Okay, and then it just gives you the answer. Now, once I did that, of course, it's telling me that I've got an inconsistency in the formulas, so we might want to make those errors go away. You know, ignore the error, that kind of thing. I think it can hide. Okay. Cost of capital is 12%, and we need to calculate the net present value. And I'll solve it right here, and I'm going to do this using Excel's NPV function. You type equal NPV. Hit the left parentheses. Now, you could start putting in the information here, but I always find it easiest to click here on the insert function where I get this wonderful pop-up. And then I can go point to the information. So where's the rate? Click here. Rate's given right there is 12%. Bring it back up. Now, for the value, you have to remember that you start with the, the first cash flow is assumed to take place at the end of the first year. See? End of the, excuse me, end of the first period. Ours happens to be being done in years, which is often the case. You look at these in an annual bu uh, annual buckets rather than months or quarters or anything else. All right, so the end of the first year is that 20000 And then I can just highlight the next range, and that will be all the cash flows. Now, if I hit Enter at this point, all I have is the net present value of the future cash flows. You, to truly be net present value, you need to subtract out the 70400 that occurs right now. So what all I do is add that negative amount to it. Some people will do this in a separate cell. I tend to do this in, two, in just one cell in Excel. And I come up with 13000 as my net present value. So that's how I would solve this one in Excel. You could click here and see the formula up there. Now, if instead you wanted to solve this using factors, here's how you would do it. You've got to figure out what's the present value of a lump sum amount and what's the present value of the annuity. Okay, now if we look at our cash flows, we know that the annuity is the $22,000 for four years. So I'll work that one first. $22,000 for four years, you're going to find this present value factor, and you multiply it times the annuity amount. Well, where did that 3.037349 came from? It came from table two. I'll slide this over, which is the present value of an annuity. Now you've got to look it up for 12% for four years, and right there is our 3.037349, okay? I'll slide that back. And then you need to know, well, where's, what's the 26,400? Well, that's the 13,200 salvage value times two vehicles. That's our 26,400. And there we're interested in the lump sum amount uh, you know, use the present value factor from table one of a dollar uh, that's four years from now. So I'll slide this over, and you see present value of a dollar four years from now at 12%. should get 0.635518. Is that what it was? Yep, 0.63558. So you'd multiply that times the lump sum. Add the two together. Now you have the total present value of the future cash flows. Then subtract out the initial cost, which is the 70400 And you get 13199 That's exactly the same is what I got there using Excel. All right?
So you can see we reached the correct answer both ways. And I'm only showing this to dollars. It might be off a few cents. That's due to rounding, which is no big deal. And that's how you solve this one.